Hi, today I'm going to talk about a billionaire data scientist and his story is very inspiring for anyone who is interested in mathematics or interested in using mathematics and statistics uh, in solving real world problem. And he is not very well known but it's important that we know about him. So before I talk about him, let me first uh, define what data science is and who we call a data scientist. Well, there is no clear definition as you probably know. But anyone using mathematics, statistics, operation research, econometrics, machine learning or artificial intelligence for problem solving uh, and problem solving in the industry, we call him a data scientist because in the academia, we call them mathematicians, statisticians, econometricians uh, or ML researcher, AI researcher and so on. We do not call them data scientists, uh, those who work as professor in university. Well, there were many data scientists much before the world became popular. So many people have used statistics, mathematics and econometrics to make fortune to solve problems in the real world much before the word data science was even popular. So one of them is uh, C, uh, Jim Simmons. Jim Simmons is uh, a billionaire and he is very successful as a hedge fund manager who has used data science uh, such as you know statistics, uh, mathematics, many applied areas of statistics and mathematics and we, we call that as data science nowadays to make a fortune for himself and he is a billionaire, he is worth 16 billion dollar as we speak. So let me talk about in brief what he did and how he became so rich being a data scientist. Well, his background is in mathematics. He did his PhD in mathematics from UC Berkeley and did his undergrad from MIT. And after that, he worked briefly in Princeton University as a code hacker during the, uh, during the Vietnam War. But he lost his job uh, because he actually voiced his opinion against the, uh, against the Vietnam War. And that didn't go well with his manager and he was fired. And then he found a professorship at Stony Brook University but um, but you know academia uh, wasn't his calling and eventually he gave up his position at Stony Brook University uh, but he did a lot of good work and in fact because of his work in geometry he received the, the award called uh, Oswald um, Bablin Prize in, in geometry and it's perhaps one of the best prize in geometry in the US but he left academia at the age of 39 to start a hedge fund and his, his, the hedge fund name is Anisa Technology. It's one of the most successful hedge fund uh, in the world and it's perhaps the most successful quantitative hedge fund, the quant hedge fund. Uh, so what it does is it collects as much as data as possible about different stocks, about different indexes, uh, companies and so on. And it, it, the peculiar thing is that it hires only hard scientists and uh, physicists, mathematicians, uh, you know, PhD in engineering, uh, computer sciences uh, are known as the hard scientists, right? For investments, right? It's quite the opposite what Wall Street does. So Wall Street hires the MBAs, right? MBAs from Harvard Business School, Wharton Business School, Stanford Business School for investment purpose. But uh, any set technology hires only scientists hard scientists which is completely unusual to what is happening now well things have changed in Wall Street nowadays they do hire uh, computer scientists uh, PhD in mathematics and physics but back in those days like 30 40 years ago nobody used to hire hard scientists for investment purpose at least well later on it it, it, it happened especially in late 80s and early 90s but not before that but you know Jim Seaman was very smart in doing that so he used many uh, traditional ML techniques, statistical data analysis, signal processing techniques to find opportunity in the stock market, which is very difficult, but he was able to do it. He was able to convince those academicians, the professors to leave their job, to come together to you know find opportunity in the, in the data that nobody was using as, uh, you know, uh, in a way that, that, that should be used. Uh, and uh, the story is that he uh, he has been able to achieve over 40% average return um, in some of his some of his uh, funds. Like the popular one is the Medellin Fund, which has achieved uh, a return of over 40% over uh, the many years it has been around. So it has produced a huge amount of money for the investor in his fund, 
and he has been able to do that just by using mathematics. So that's the power of mathematics. Well, we have heard about how computer a programmer made fortune such as whether it's Steve Jobs, uh, Bill Gates and many others who have been able to make a large sum of money or fortune, big fortune for themselves. But uh, there is very little known things about mathematicians making big or becoming billionaire by using mathematics and he is one of them. So if you are familiar with mathematics, you love mathematics and you think that it's only academia where you will find you're calling uh, that not true can be done and he's one inspiration for all of us who are interested in mathematics and statistics and, and theoretical computer science and so on. So the takeaway points here is that the data is important, it has always been important but uh, we never knew it is so important. Only now we come to know that data is so so very important. Even the big organizations do not have high quality data. Uh, probably those who are working in different companies would know that even the big organized, big multinational companies are struggling to get high quality of data. Nobody knows even struggling. And more data is better. And that's what Jim Simon did. He collected every single data. So even before the word big data was popular, he made use of that concept that every single data is important. Even if it is noise, we need to identify that noise. And, and it could be an opportunity. Even a noise could be an opportunity. Uh, an outlier could be an opportunity. Um, so that's what he used and he hired the best of the scientists those who are really good at you know publishing papers or you know the, the nerdy ones the the geeky ones something that is not often very recognized in the Wall Street or many other you know traditional hedge funds or traditional investment companies and he did exactly the opposite he hired the best of the scientists not the street smart MBS and uh, he also did one very good thing is that he didn't publish the algorithm and he has always kept it secret, still not known which algorithms are used in Renisa technology. It's, it's, so these are some of the takeaway points from his career. I thought of sharing with you. Hope it is useful. Thank you so much. And if you like this video, please share with others. Also, please subscribe to our channel.